Retired Lieutenant Colonel James Carafano joins us. He's Vice President for National Security and Foreign Policy at the Heritage Foundation. You know, Lieutenant Colonel, uh, the Warren Bureau's dedication and love is, is astounding. And I think we always need to remember the, the case of Otto when talking about Kim Jong-un. But this bill, do you think it can finally kneecap Kim so that we can finally go after his financial foundation that supports him, the elite, and the military? Yeah, the, the only person that can start North Korea on a path to becoming a normal nation is Kim. And, and the sanctions alone won't do that. You know, we often say North Korea is the most heavily sanctioned country on the planet, which is true. But we, we haven't fully enforced all the possible sanctions. And that even what if we did, this regime is very adept at finding just enough money, just enough resources to keep going. So at this only ends when Kim says, I will change my country, that's the day we have to wait for. And what are the chances of that? I mean, his whole structure is based on this, uh, you know, uh, a terror regime that well, th rewards this is, the elites and, and the nuclear and military program. Well, this is the, the challenge that Kim realizes, but because Kim, unlike his father and his grandfather, seems to have, have recognized that North Korea does not have a future unless it has access and it becomes a normal nation. And so he's struggling with how to secure the regime and its traditional place in North Korea, and yet how to get opening to the West. And the challenge is he'd just prefer to keep the nuclear weapons and have the normalization. And the deal that the administration has put on the table and they have not changed is, dude, you have to commit to a full plan that at the end means there are no more nuclear weapons. And that's predicated on any sanctions relief. And he's been constantly testing Trump over the the last year or so to see if, if the president's really serious about that commitment. But if the Chinese banks, for example, that support him, if the spigot is cut off by them because of uh, uh, this new bill and this new law, if the uh, support of other companies that secretly do business with Kim Jong-un's regime, if those spigots and that flow is cut off because their choice is either do business with the United States of America right. or do business with Kim, that, that ain't a choice for everyone yeah, that, around the globe. They're going to go with look, the U.S. And, and the West. You know, I just think we have to be practical here. It's unrealistic that, that sanctions alone are going to do this. this. Look, this regime has one of the most sophisticated nuclear weapons programs on the planet. They've done that with an economy which is dead last. It has the worst economy in the entire universe. And, they, and this is the thing about these authoritarian regimes. When all you have to do is, is, is set aside and squander enough money to do things that, that you think are important, build a nuclear weapon and get some shovels, regulars, and porn films, you can do this. So, so we can't squeeze him out of this. He has to make this decision. But what I think that's been great about the U.S. strategy of maximum pressure is the, the sanctioning does, it really limits the capacity for him to build out his arsenal, gain access to the West, um, conventional deterrence, nuclear deterrence, missile defense. These things really prevent Kim from being a threat to our national interests. Our national interests are secure. The diplomatic track, the only person that can really benefit from that is, is Kim. If he chooses to abandon that with a provocative test or something, then, then his regime is back where they started. And, and Cindy Warmbier and uh, Mr. Warmbier, Fred, had uh, some wise words about how to deal, deal with that regime. Here they are. Take a listen. As far as a message to the president about how to deal with North Korea, obviously we didn't do well. I've always said the same thing, don't make a bad deal and don't believe a word they say. And nothing's changed. We believe that if we enforce the rule of law against North Korea, it's not going to happen inside North Korea, it's going to happen outside of North Korea. And, and we force them to engage in their criminal enterprises, which they have all over the world, um, that can lead to engagement with them. It, will, it can force dialogue with them. Don't believe a word they say. Don't uh, make a bad deal and don't trust them. Boy, I, I couldn't have said it better myself. And so finally, uh, to wrap it up, I mean, where does this go? And what do you think this Christmas surprise is? Do you see any possible break? Well, first of all, I, is anybody else a little curious? I, I, how we can have a Christmas surprise from a country that just takes Christians and puts, puts them in jail? Um, but I, I, I don't know if we know where it goes. Uh, the publicly available open source stuff we have doesn't show... Uh, as far as I know, the preparations for a test now. So we may or may not, not see something. I, I just don't think we know at this point. But the point is, if North Korea tests, we have sent a very strong message. 
All we're going to do is double down on the sanctions, and you'll be worse off than when you started. That mm-hmm. message is clear. All right, Lieutenant Colonel James Carafano, we thank you. And the Warmbiers, by the way, are trying to go after the assets of North Koreans because it seems one thing that Kim Jong-un uh, understands, and that's what supports his regime, and that's foreign money. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks Bye. for having me.